for iOS in ProPresenter 5. The ChurchTechCast.com screencast show is generously provided for by viewers like you. Thank you. Head on over to Patreon.com slash PaulAllenCliff. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash PaulAllenCliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. And you can support the show for as little as a dollar a month or as much as, I don't know, it's up to you. So thank you for your support. So I thought today that we would talk about the remote app that you can use in ProPresenter 5. And, well, I originally got it during the ProPresenter 3 days, so it's uh, been around for a while and offered free updates. So um, basically it's a separate download for your iPhone or iPad on the... Um, the App Store, and it does cost a little bit of money. I can't remember exactly how much. I want to say $4.95. And when you download this, this enables you to have some control over ProPresenter that perhaps you didn't have before. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to try and show it to you. I'm using a an app called uh, X Mirage to mirror it, but Oh yes, I just realized that I could rescale this. So um, let's make sure that that doesn't cause problems. Looks as though maybe it has. So anyway, we'll uh, pop on over and take a look at that. Let me make sure, because right now I'm actually seeing this screen with some other stuff. So let's make sure that the X Mirage, yep, that is going. So I think that rescaling it. Basically, this is the screen that you see when you log into ProPresenter 5. Let me see if I can scale this back down to its regular resolution and see if that affects this here might need to stop it and restart it. So let me do that actually right now before we continue on. I'm going to go out of that and then back into it. Okay, good. So you can't actually see my finger on this, which is okay. But the first thing that I need to do is, um, before I even do this, is in ProPresenter 5, you need to enable the controls. And that can be done over here in um, Preferences. Command comma, I believe is what it is. And here in the Network Settings, you need to enable this here. And I've only enable the controller, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, enable the observer too. These are the default passwords, control and observe. So you're probably going to want to change those so that you don't have people observing and controlling that you don't want to. So let me put that back. Now, so what I need to do in order to get this to work from a control standpoint is click on this populates automatically if everything's working correctly. And I'm going to type in the password C O N T R O, oops, O L. And there's a little bit of lag, but I'm going to click done, and that will take me over here. So the first screen here that we have is the library. And basically, I can choose any song by tapping on the library function, which I've just done here. There we go. And I could scroll down and pick up any of these songs. 
that's not what I'm going to do though. I'm going to go back by tapping uh, the name of the computer, in this case it's Paul 3, and I'm going to go to the current playlist, which is the default playlist, and you'll see that we have all the songs that I've put in here, uh, which strangely enough happen to all be public domain, as if I would thought of copyright and stuff like that. So let's go to A Mighty Fortress Is Our God. If I'd chosen any of the other songs in the song library, that would have worked as well. And that should bring up all the verses of A Mighty Fortress Is Our God here in just a second. Okay, there we go. So by tapping on a verse, it enables me to switch to that verse. So now I'm on verse number one, and that should show up over in ProPresenter. I don't know why it hasn't. Uh, probably because I'm using so many pieces of software. There we go. Yeah, it's just laggy because I am streaming, I'm recording, I'm got ProPresenter open, I've got XMirage open, I've got a lot of different stuff open, so that's why it's laggy. It's not actually laggy when you don't have all this junk open. So what I can do is I'm scrolling down, let's say that the um, worship pastor decided to hop to verse 2 right here, I can just tap on that, and again when I don't have everything open it it's pretty immediate that it goes there. So I can go between verses um, and all and that works perfectly fine. Let me pop over to verse 3 here. There we go. And so that's perfectly fine. Now, uh, what you can't see, because even though I tried to resize it earlier and it didn't work, is towards the bottom you have three choices. You've got control, producer, and remote. Producer has the message screen. Here, let me go over that. Okay, so we've got the messages, so I could type in a message. Howdy, pastor and click done and below that you see where you see howdy pastor that's the preview and then I can tap up here in the corner where it says show and that shows up on the screen which you can see right over here so that's pretty nifty where, that it shows up and then I can hide it so then I can close the message screen and I can go to a countdown, and I can do basically the same thing is I can show the countdown. You can't actually see that because it's on top of the text here. So I'm going to hide the countdown and you'll see the text gets clearer. But So that's just that piece of the puzzle. Now at the bottom there's also a remote icon, lower right hand corner, and you see this. When you first set this up, you can either set it up to swipe, which is what I do, or set it up to type, or tap. The tap, you tap on the right side of the screen and it goes forward. You tap on the left side of the screen and it goes back. With swipe, you swipe right to left and it goes forward and you swipe left to right and it goes back. So I think of it that there are slides just off the screen in each direction and I swipe as if I'm trying to see those. So I'm going to swipe to the next one. It gives me that big arrow to show me which direction I'm going, which is a bit counterintuitive to me because I just swiped the opposite direction. So you'll notice this and notice how the number of slides advances so this would be good if if you've got a pastor that wants to control his or her own slides you can use this so 
we can just go forward and back all we want. This isn't linear, or this is linear, it's not nonlinear. To do it in a nonlinear way, you would have to go back to control. Now, so what if you decide that you want to get rid of something on the screen? Well, there's that eraser button at the top, and what you can't see is on the bottom, a uh, box just popped up. You can see just the barely the top of it, and it says clear action. So there's a big clear all button. There's a clear slide, clear black background, clear props, clear audio, and go to logo. So if I go to the logo, you'll see that the ProPresenter 5 logo shows up. And I can tap that again, and I can clear all, and that clears everything. And then I can start advancing again. So you really have a lot of control when it comes to this remote, more than just the forward and back of a presentation remote. So that's kind of the basics. Now it is possible to change the style of the remote and I tried to do this yesterday and for whatever reason it just did not want to do it so I'm trying to do it again I guess I should have paid more attention because it did actually say how to change it but I just didn't pay attention when it said how to change it so that's something that you should absolutely do so that's basically how you operate the remote in ProPresenter 5 and I really hope that it helped you to see just what you could do see that changes over here in the remote screen which is emulated here um, show up on the main screen with ProPresenter I hope that that helps you as you're choosing how to use ProPresenter 5 and uh, just how to get the most use out of it. There's also another, oh, let me real quick, I'm going to log out and I'm going to log back in with the observe command. And again, that that's a password and it can be anything Um, for some reason that doesn't seem to be working. Oh, okay. So, so I was on the remote area and it didn't want me to do that. I was on the producer area. It didn't want me to do that. But I can go ahead and I can scroll through and I can look at all the lyrics that are going to happen in order. Let's see here. Looks like I can also take a look at the library. And of course, let's see here. I think yeah, Amazing Grace isn't in the library. So didn't want to put up uh, non-public domain lyrics here. So this is connecting and I suppose this would be helpful if you're a worship leader and you're changing the song at the last minute and you just want to go through all the possible songs that are in the library as opposed to just assuming it's in the library when it may or may not be. So you can do that, take a look at what's going on in the library. I don't know why this is taking so long. It's not just the lag on the screen, it's also showing up um, on the iPhone here. And um, I think that that's a very good way to do it. You'll notice here, let me put my mouse up here, that I'm in airplane mode with the Wi-Fi connected. And I think that that's probably the way that you would want to do this so that your pastor or whoever is using the ProPresenter remote isn't distracted by text messages or calls or anything else. So that might be a good way to do it. I suppose you could also buy an iPod Touch instead of an iPhone so that that's less of an issue. 
and just keep this app on it. So that's probably uh, a little from the standpoint of best practices. So yeah, I'm able to um, also see the next song in the playlist and such. I don't know why this is breaking up like this, but it's probably just some network congestion with my 12 year old daughter watching YouTube videos or something. But I hope that that helps you and I hope that it helps your church as you're using ProPresenter 5 um, as part of what you do to go out and change eternity. Don't forget to subscribe to this video. Um, you can watch the next episode after I release it. Of course, I haven't released it as I'm recording this. You can watch other shows on the network or the previous episode. Um, also, if you head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact, you can leave your questions, comments, etc. All my contact information is listed there. So you can drop me a line on email, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. Give me a call on the voicemail hotline, 1-877-763-3246, pod echo if that helps you remember that. Or hit me up on Twitter, Paul Allen Cliff, P A U L A L A N C L I F. Till next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with Trinity Digital Media.